Hello, my name is Roland Moe, and I'm the Director of Educational Technology and Media at Seattle Pacific University. I'd like to respond to the primers on this conversation, uh, specifically those from Audrey, Ulrich, and Nishant. Um, before that can really happen, though, my main point is I need to think about this perspective taking a step back not talking about trust and value in an open system, but in fact talking about open and what that means. Because when I look at the Open Education Week uh, list of worldwide events, I see a lot of instruments. I see open and online learning. I see how technology X can affect your classroom. I see the future of technology X in environment Y. I don't see so I see a lot of what's. I don't see a lot of why's. I think we have this assumption that we all understand what open is as a value, but we haven't defined that. When we define open, we're talking about attributes, we're talking about instruments, we're talking about the five R's, and we're talking about where open gets appropriated. But we just have this somewhat blithe assumption that we all agree on what open represents and what open is. And that gets to a point that Nishant made where he said that the open is the technological and that creates a false binary where the closed is in fact human. And if that kind of discord exists with open, because I think a lot of people hear that and think that's not how I believe, but we all are marching toward this idea with open. And are we really making progress on what we believe is... You know, is there a grand narrative if we're postmodern? You know, is there a localized future that we're trying to affect? Or is this, in fact, a, a Baudrillian sim simulacrum? Um, are we all marching towards something that, that doesn't really exist, that's shrouded in mystery, and that we don't have a, a firm handle on? And if that's the case, what is the work that we're doing, and how is that truly being appropriated out there? Uh, if we're going to get upset that open washing is happening, that, you know, from Wiley's 2011 definition, companies and organizations are utilizing the value proposition of open to sell their product, which is not in alignment with what open represents. How can we get upset about that if we don't truly have a shared why vision of open? If we want to talk about trust and we want to talk about privacy, we need to talk about the values inherent to open. And we need to realize that inherency isn't the right answer, but in fact, this is a negotiated sociocultural space with its own norms and mores. Um, I want to take a, a, a quick trip back for a second into history of open and the open university and a little bit about distance education because I think there's an interesting parallel between how we look at the history of distance education and how we look at what we think of as open and what I'm talking about here. So distance education has two distinct histories. On one hand, it's the great emancipator. So regardless of your socioeconomic status, uh, your religion, your race, your ethnicity, your gender, your sexual orientation, um, your socioeconomic status, you can go to school, you can have upward mobility, that dream of upward mobility, what we call the American dream in the States. Um, on the other hand, there's the very pragmatic vision which says without the penny post and without an industrial revolution that allows for the inexpensive uh, replication of materials, there's no opportunity for distance education. Those two histories are not distinct, they are the same. We like to refer to them as distinct as based on our own ideological principles. So entrepreneurial and pragmatic sides will say, well, you have to have the penny post, you have to have these technological movements. And on the other side, we say there's a drive, there's a need, there's a, a group that is pushing for this based in the enlightenment and continuing forward. Um, it's messy when you put those two together, but you have to put those two together because otherwise you get an incomplete picture. Um, unfortunately, we too often talk about the pragmatic aspect. So when you think about the march of, of distance education, there's this idea of, well, we need community. We have these people who have never had the opportunity before and learning materials are not able to create 
social constructivist modes of learning. Now, that wasn't what they were saying back then, but we would say that today looking back. So we need broadcast. First generation of distance education, uh, technologically mediated, the radio. Uh, didn't do what we were hoping, so broadcast television. That's it. Yeah. Okay, that wasn't it. Telecommunications, that's it. Here we go. And we're kind of settled here that the internet as a telecommunication tool is what is going to be able to allow us to transform learning and create this idea, whatever it is that we mean by open that we can't truly define, um, out there. But we keep defining it in the instrument with this idea that instruments are ahistorical, apolitical, atheoretical, neutral. Instruments are not in any way, shape, form, or fashion neutral. They are socially and culturally bound in a specific environment by developers with specific ideologies. And I use the term developers specifically because we now kind of have the stereotypical idea of what the developer represents, okay? Um, but d people developed these technologies and these tools, and then they were appropriated from those spaces and in those times. And now we have what we're calling learning communities or communities of practice online. We've appropriated the idea of community to have this idea that this tool allows for this community to take place when one, you can't force a community, and two, a community is, is in a lot of ways a closed system, closed by geography, closed by interest, closed by the, the values and norms and mores that the people of that community share. So the idea of the global community is an oxymoron. Um, Audrey mentioned surveillance, and I think this is where we start to get into what open is facing as a troubling place when it's defined as a what rather than a what and a why. Um, she says that surveillance is not new in education, that we've had it for a long time. The difficulty is throughout our educational history, uh, there has been a disproportion of who is surveilled, so it is not applied equally. Um, when we have these neutral tools that we believe, uh, such as we have in open. So what we're doing is we're continuing the surveillance state. We have developed this application that is able to track and monitor, but it's also able to do these other things, which is what we're, we're very interested in. So we're continuing that, but we're selling this as a neutral space. We're selling the technological as the open, as the neutral, as the benevolent, um, as a community. However, through the best intentions, usually, we're doing the same sort of surveillance. We're still keeping it disweighted and disjointed. And now our inferences are really affecting how that surveillance manifests. So how can we establish trust and how can we establish privacy in these spaces when we're creating what we are assuming are technologically neutral tools in the guise of open, in the guise of this benevolent space but in fact, we're ignoring or pushing away that, uh, that dual distinct history. Um, you know, Ulrich says that trust is not rational, but it is personal and emotional. And everything in that regard, uh, touched by human, is, is personal and emotional, no matter how much we want to say. You know, you think about uh, Ergo Engstrom um, doing his design research and saying, no research is on bias. By being in the room with the subjects, the research has that level of bias and loses what we want to term, you know, the completely objective. Uh, we can't ignore that in anything we're building. We can't ignore that in open. We can't believe that what we are doing is removed from politics and power and inference and that we all subscribe to the same values necessarily. So. Before we can further, in my opinion, before we can further the conversation of trust and privacy, before we could even establish trust or privacy, we need to be able to create a better definition of open that involves the what as well as the why. So the list of instruments and the list of attributes is vital, but at the same time, we need to look at those from the perspective of sociocultural values, norms, and mores.